Okay, so I was asked to try the Raspi key, which is an eMMC drive, which plugs straight into the SD card slot on a Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, it also comes with Raspberry Pi OS already pre-written on it. So I'm gonna give that a try as well. I bought the cheaper one, the 16 gig one. Uh, but I also got recommended these SP SD cards, which have come out well in other people's tests. So I thought I'd give that a try and add it to my long list of SD card speed tests. So I'm gonna put this in my Pi and boot it up and see what happens. Okay, so the first problem I came across was that the Raspberry key doesn't work with this case. And this, I'm, not, I'm only using this case because this is what I generally do my speed tests in, uh, this Pi. Uh, but you can see here that the actual edge of the sort of key bit uh, is too wide to go in. The, the ridge there should be flush in here. Uh, so you can see a ridge on a normal SD card. Uh, and they've shown that with the sort of... Uh, the sort of painted on bit that shows how far it should go in. So it doesn't work with that case. Not a problem with this case because uh, this just comes out. Uh, I really like this case. Uh, it's the official Raspberry Pi one and I've got the fan as well, but I like the way it just clips together. So if you need your Pi quickly, you can just get it out of the case. But other cases that it might not work with. Uh, so I don't know about this one. This might be all right. This is the Nest Pi 4 case and uh, so it's that way around. Yeah, that's okay. So Nest Pi 4 case, it's absolutely fine with. So Nest Pi Pro case is also another case with a different way of doing it. Uh, and here we just push it in. Yeah, that looks like that's fine. So maybe it's just that other one. Although I do have, well, this one will be fine because there's loads of room. Uh, so this is a sort of cheap Amazon one that I bought, which I've used in several videos. Uh, this one I think is going to be all right because there's a lovely big opening where the SD card is, but I haven't got a Pi in there at the moment. These may be an issue. Yeah, that's going to be an issue uh, with the DeSalvo case because there isn't a lot of space there. So where the SD card goes in, uh, it's actually going to hit this bit before it gets to the Pi. I haven't got a Pi in here at the moment. And the same with the other DeSalvo case. Actually, that one might be all right uh, because... Yeah, I think that, that may be okay. Uh, I'd have to put a pie in to know for sure. Still the best looking case for the pie, I think, this DeSalvo case, the original one. I love this case. Right, oh, that's not going to go, is it? Because uh, already it's going to be, uh, you're going to lose that that much before. So not suitable for, for some cases, but works with others. So my main case that you see in most of my videos, I think is gonna be fine uh, because, yeah, it's this spring clip. So that one works perfectly fine uh, with this cluster case. So I'm gonna use uh, the Pi just sort of bare as is and do the speed test like that. Oh, try not to drop it. Oh, I've got some thermal paste from something. Oh, that's from my DeSalvo case. Okay, so this is first time switching on. Uh, now, all of my Pis would have a pretty up-to-date bootloader because I've done loads of tests in previous videos. Um, but uh, there may be a chance that you don't have the most up-to-date bootloader. Although it did say something on the website about almost like they've over overcome it, but I'll have a look at the web page when it boots up. Yeah, it's starting as Raspberry Pi OS would normally start up. And I'm letting the software update itself because both of the SP cards have the very latest and updated software on them, so it's gonna be a fair test. Okay, so this is the official page, uh, and it did say on here, uh, Raspberry Pi key is plug and play. Uh, most Raspberry Pi models, if you have a Pi 4B from an older batch, which was rather old firmware that cannot recognize Raspberry Pi key, you may need to update the bootloader of your Raspberry Pi 4 beforehand. And there is a user manual uh, online, uh, so it's all it's all nicely done. And I bought this; I, I was recommended. I haven't I haven't been sent this for free. Let's have a look and do a speed test. So if we go to accessories and diagnostics and run tests, and that was a pretty quick pass. So let's do show log. So sequential write speed forty three oh three oh random write six five three seven random read five five one oh so I need to look at my SD card video and see where that comes uh, within the ratings. Here you go. So if I go to my videos and I did a recent SD card, I think I've done twelve so far. Uh, so this will only search my channel. So let's try that. 
Oh look, it's not the it's not the most recent one that shows up. Twelve, that's the most recent one. One month ago. So two of my favourite cards: uh, the Kingston sixty four Canvas Go A two and the Sandisk Extreme Pro. Uh, yeah, it definitely beats those. Uh, so on everything. Oh yeah, well random write speed is actually way better. I usually do three tests. Uh, so let's reset and run tests. Okay, let's have a look. So. The best of all the tests, I reckon, was probably this one. Yeah, the last test. So let's delete the other two. And let's try the uh, Samsung Bar, which is a decent USB stick uh, without being like really expensive. Here we go. This one would have the Samsung Bar in it. Because most USB sticks are definitely slower, um, but the occasional one comes out faster. And some of them, like the uh, Corsair one that I mentioned in this video, which I haven't got, uh, because it's really expensive, uh, is super fast. But still, value for money for me is uh, an SSD. But again, this might be for a particular project that you want to have low power, uh, very reliable, and, uh, and nice and small. So the Samsung bar is here, and I'll pop that in. So, yeah, so to be fair, it's beaten the Samsung bar. Uh, it's beaten the Kingston and the SanDisk cards as well. Um, so actually performance is pretty decent. Okay, so let's restart with one of the SP SD cards Okay, so first test on the SP uh, which stands for silicon power has come up with a fail uh, So let's have a look. This is the blue card uh, So pass fail fail. Yeah, woeful 274 1442. So it's not even worth keeping a fail uh, So let's reset and do it again Okay, so another fail. See, in a way, the speed test does three tests anyway if it fails, so I probably only needed to do the one, because uh, here we go, let run one, run two, run three. So I think I'm just going to leave it Leave it with that one. Um, it's not one I'd recommend anyway, uh, so let's save that as is. So last up is the green silicon power, uh, which is 3D NAND, it's uh, branded as, and this is the one that I was recommended to try. I just got the other one because it was... It was slightly cheaper, but was still uh, looking like it was reasonable specs. To be fair, it wasn't making any claims uh, to be an A1 or an A2 rated card or anything like that. So I'm not, I, it was only £5.65, something like that. Uh, this was about 90p more. So let's do this test. Hopefully this will just do it first time and uh, it will just come up with a green pass because uh, that took ages on the other one. Okay, so that's come up with a pass and it didn't take very long. And the third test and show log so let's pick the best one from these three these are the other two i've done really for me it's the randoms that are the key ones and i think this last one the write speed is quicker but the read speed is slower i think i'm going to stick with this one um the first one well so it passes which is great uh what are we looking like if we compare it to the a2 cards yeah the a2 cards like the kingston canvas go uh, which would be 30, well, way, way faster on the sequential write speed, but the randoms, yeah, also a lot faster. More expensive card, to be fair. The same with the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I really need to get those figures up uh, to be able to compare it like for like. Okay, so let's have a look in the description of the uh, 12 SD card speed test video. So uh, Canvas Go and Extreme Pro, we've already uh, compared it to. And we just need the bit here with the 3D NAND. So the Brave Eagle, uh, which I did recently, beats it. Nearly double the random write speed and the random read speed is more than double. So yeah, the Brave Eagle came out really well on that. Uh, the Alert Seal also beats it. Really good sequential write speed. Uh, random, read, random write speed is good. Random read speed is excellent. Uh, the Magic so yeah, so most things beat it to be fair. I mean, at the end of the day, it's how much you're paying for a card with whatever performance you're getting. Now, that's still a reasonable performance, but it's only just hitting the A1 read and write speeds. So when it comes to the Brave Eagle and the Alert Seal, they are really good value for money, and I would recommend them more uh, than the 3D NAND. Uh, looking at the figures, it's definitely better. But at the end of the day, uh, it's definitely the overall speed is going to be better with an SSD. I think the the price to performance is best on SSD, but I still like SD cards because for simplicity uh, and the fact that they go in the pie and things like that. 
but obviously think about how you want to run your operating system. The Raspberry Pi key may be the one for you because it's still hitting decent speeds, uh, but also uh, should prove to be very reliable on data. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.